So now in this video, we're gonna use a 555 timer to get a buzzer buzzing and uh, or clicking. We can use an active buzzer if the outputs change slowly, it'll turn it on and off, and a passive buzzer when the output is changing rapidly. So uh, rapidly, but a slower rapidly, it will click, and then uh, rapidly enough, the uh, passive buzzer will beep. So it makes a noise every time the output changes, whereas the active buzzer just keeps buzzing as long as power is applied. So this is a stable mode here, which means the capacitor keeps charging through these two resistors and uh, discharging to uh, set the output. While the capacitor is charging, output's high. While it's discharging, output is low. We have a light dependent resistor right there. Its resistance changes based on how much light is falling on it. So brighter light, the capacitor will charge and discharge faster. And then lower light, the capacitor will take longer to charge and longer to discharge. So now, to uh, begin with, 555 timer, we have to power the 555 timer. It also sets the uh, one-third and two-third supply voltage. There's three resistive areas in there, three resistors basically of equal value, and so you tap into one-third, two-thirds. But in any case, positive supply goes to a uh, pin eight, and then the uh, negative supply, ground, our zero volt reference point, goes to uh, pin number one, top pin up there. So pin number four, that's the reset pin. We don't want it to do anything. It's waiting for a low input from a negative rail. I think about halfway to the negative rail, so less than half the supply voltage. I could be wrong though. But in any case, if we put it to the positive rail, that prevents it from doing anything. Now, let's do another jumper right here. You can see pin two and pin six. They monitor the voltage of the capacitor. And so, they monitor the same voltage. Pin two waits for a less than uh, one third supply voltage. Pin six waits for more than two thirds supply voltage. And they each change the output accordingly. So I'm just gonna take a jumper right there and connect the two pins directly together so they're always seeing the exact same voltage. Pin seven is the discharge pin. So we're gonna use a five volt supply in this uh, video we have a 220 ohm resistor. So that sets a minimum resistance. Sometimes pin seven is connected directly to ground. That's why it's the discharge pin. And then other times it is not connected to anything and doesn't do anything and doesn't influence the other components. So we're gonna take 220 ohm resistor because we're using five volts. That allows five to go through the resistor directly to ground, no problem. It shouldn't overheat. Now we have the light dependent resistor between the discharge pin there, pin seven, and uh, the threshold, which also has a jumper going to a trigger. So we're gonna grab that. And so ultimately, unless the light is bright enough, this will provide most of the resistance. We can get it below 220 ohms if we get the light bright enough on it. I think it's probably about 300 ohms with the light as it is, but uh, not too important to uh, be uh, that picky. We're just interested in what the circuit does for the most part here. And uh, so we will slide that up. We have the uh, capacitor, 100 microfarad works pretty good. So that's 100 microfarad, can be charged up to uh, 50 volts. It's polarized, that side needs to be more negative. So we're gonna take the line lead, put it to pin six where the light dependent resistor is. And uh, that, that jumper that goes to pin two, right there. So that is it for the uh, timing part of this. Now, we're gonna grab a buzzer. And the buzzer over here, that's pin three. That is the output. And I believe this is the uh, passive buzzer. There's no enamel down there. And uh, so that goes to pin three, it is polarized. There's the plus on top and uh, this jumper goes to the uh, negative rail down there. I'll slide that up. So this will either buzz or click when the output goes high. Pretty straightforward there. And that's it. We are done wiring it. That's all there is to it. And we have the power supply, it's off right now. 
turn it on and you can hear clicking so we definitely know this is the uh, passive buzzer if I remove the uh, passive buzzer and grab the uh, active buzzer so you can see it's uh, filled in at the, the bottom and uh, there you can see it beeps whenever the output is high so it beeps it keeps beeping that's all there is to it so higher value a capacitor like this will keep it beeping for a while and then have it turn off for a while but it makes that loud annoying beep so that's probably the last time we will look at that let's put the uh, passive buzzer back and the uh, click is not so bad hopefully you can still hear it okay and we will grab a flashlight so we can slow the click way down covering that no problem and you can hear a more rapid clicking right there when I put the flashlight on there now we got the 100 foot so if you really like that clicking that's that's good this is a 2.2 microfarad uh, capacitor and I uh, will zoom in so about 1 50th the uh, size so that I can see the 50 volts and I think you can see the 2.2 there anyways we don't need to be too uh, too picky about that we'll put that there you can hear oops the clicking or er, go so fast we're getting a kind of a buzz now and more of a buzz so that's 2.2 microfarad this is 0 0.01 microfarad 10 nanofarad and uh, let's see if I can get to the negative rail. And we have that buzzing, that tone. Looks like it went out of. I don't know if you can hear that. I can't hear that. I've lost some high pitch uh, sense uh, from my ears from uh, early surgery. So don't know if you could hear that, but uh, I could not hear that buzzing at uh, some point. So, in any case, that's all there really is to uh, this circuit. So, thanks for watching. Check out one of the other videos that I am posting. And uh, subscribe, click the bell, and watch my other videos. I will see you in the next video.